you all everybody hey this is part two of my Photoshop CC 2018 series where we're learning how to uh, kind of populate a room using adjustment layers to change the color of walls and in this video we're gonna learn how to actually put furniture into this room so that it looks like it's actually in there so if you want to learn how to change like paint colors in a room make sure you check out video one of the series for right now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open a file that has a picture of the furniture that we want to place into this room. So I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go to Open, and I'm going to select the chair that I want to work with. So we actually have a JPEG file, and uh, this is the chair. It's kind of like a men in black looking kind of thing here. What's really important for the method I'm about to show you is that you do find furniture that has a white background or at least a solid background of some kind. If you're trying to do this with a piece of furniture that's already located in a picture with other furniture, this is not going to work so well. So make sure that you go to a furniture company and most furniture companies do show their furniture with white backgrounds. You can also type like chair with white background into Google and uh, you should be able to search the images and find what you're looking for. All right, so I want to put this chair into this room. So you'll notice that we have two tabs that I can kind of toggle back and forth to. If I click and drag this tab out, it kind of minimizes this drawing so that I can also see the first drawing of the room. To move this picture into this room, I'm going to use the move command and I'm basically clicking and dragging and then dropping that picture right into this room. So again, that was the move command. I'm going to click and drag this picture and I'm going to literally kind of drag it into and make sure that you get that little plus sign on your cursor um, then that's how you can kind of drag the picture in. Now it's unfortunate because I think it, this chair would look really cool in this room if it weren't for this white background that's kind of here. So we need to uh, adjust this picture so that it has a transparent background so it actually looks like the chair is in the room. I'm going to hit delete and delete to make sure that I get rid of all those chair pictures and basically I'm going to redock this image back up here into the tab area and see that blue outline that indicates I'm about to dock that file right back into place. Okay so how to get a transparent background onto this. I need to give this image what's called a layer mask. A mask is something that's going to hide portions of the picture and show other portions of the picture. And of course, every picture has different things to hide and show. So this method is going to help you understand how to do this with furniture. Photoshop CC 2018 actually has a new command that we can use that makes this a very simple process. I'm going to go up to select and select in mask. You can also alt Control r to get to this area. And what this does is it actually puts us in a special mode. Now mine came up transparent. Yours probably is going to look a little bit more like this. Normally it defaults to the onion skin. When we go up here to the view in the properties and kind of click on this little arrow to bring this drop down menu. So you see a chair that has a checkered pattern to it and of course the checkered pattern indicates transparency in Photoshop. So our first step is to get this chair to not be transparent. I do that by coming over to the left hand side of the screen and choose the very first icon on the top. This is called the quick selection tool. And when I click it you notice the cursor changes to kind of like a crosshairs like you would in a scope of some kind. I'm going to click and drag inside the chair to make sure that I can get all of the parts to highlight. And it's a pretty smart tool. Um, for the most part, it's going to click and grab everything that we need it to. So now my chair is not looking transparent. There's no checkered pattern onto it. I'm going to double check and make sure that I got everything selected that I need to. By coming over here to the view, and I'm going to go to where it says black and white. Now like I said, Photoshop masks 
they hide parts and they show parts. So anything that's white indicates that it's going to show. Anything black indicates that it's going to hide. So you'll notice we have a couple areas that we need to fix. So to fix these, I'm going to come over here to the left hand side and I'm going to click on the brush tool. My options bar changed a little bit, so I see a plus sign, a minus sign, and then of course I see the size of the brush. So here I could say that I need it to be bigger or smaller. The plus sign means that I'm going to be painting with the color white. The minus sign means I'm going to be painting with the color black. So I'm going to concentrate up here on the top part first. I'm going to use the magnifying glass to kind of help me zoom into that area so I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go back and use the brush tool and make sure that the plus sign is on and you can see how I can actually paint that back white. Now why this happened to begin with is probably because the pixels of the chair at the top were extremely white and they matched the background. So Photoshop had a hard time understanding what to pick up in this area. And I did a pretty good job right here of painting that back in. You might not be having such great luck as I did. That's okay. This is an art and a science behind it. So if for some reason, for instance, like you come like way out like that, know that you can always do control Z to undo that. Or if it's just like this little bit, you can use the minus sign and actually paint in black and try to see if you can kind of fix that a little bit so that you get something like that. The goal is to try and get this as smooth as possible. If it's a little uh, jagged through here, it's okay. It's not going to be the end of the world, but uh, that's basically what we're looking for. I'm going to control minus and come back to this view of the drawing and know that I've got to fix this area over here. So magnifying glass. It helps to hover the magnifying glass over the area that you want to zoom in on. Um, so that you can kind of get it to center more on the screen. Brush tool. I'm going to use the plus sign and just try to come in here and paint this back in. Something just like that. Control minus out. I'm going to take a look and see how I did. Yeah, I didn't do too bad. If you need to readjust, go ahead and pause the video to do so. I'm going to go ahead and move on like we're ready to go. So now that I've made sure that I got everything selected, white or black, with my chair, I'm going to come over here to the View tab and I'm going to go to On Black. What we're going to do is we're going to refine the edge of this chair. A lot of times what happens in Photoshop is when we uh, do this method, there's these little white pixels that you necessarily can't see by the naked eye, but they've kind of clung to our picture. And we're going to kind of get rid of those and smooth out the edges. I do this by coming over to the left hand side and choosing the second brush, which is called the Refine Edge Brush Tool. You'll notice my cursor changes. I kind of have the same plus and minus. I do have this a little bit larger um, than the 13. Um, maybe I could kind of shrink it down just a little bit. And I'm going to start by clicking and dragging, but I'm not going to start at the top where we kind of had some of those issues. I'm going to kind of go over here to the side. I'm going to click and drag around the outline of this shape. And you kind of see it adjusting itself a little bit here and there. And again, what it's doing is it's taking any of those little extra white pixels that might have attached itself to the edge of our drawing. And we're just kind of smoothing it out. And when I come to the area that I actually have um, adjusted using that white area, uh, the white and black view, I have to be kind of careful because if I go over it too much, it actually kind of ghosts the chair and I lose the pixels. It's a very picky tool. I'm going to control Z and instead of going like right on the edge like I had been, I'm just going to kind of make the edge of the circle touch right in those areas. And then I can kind of come back and go full on. And then again, where it's kind of picky in those areas, I'm just going to kind of go on the edge and see if I can't smooth it out that way.
Sometimes Photoshop needs to think and that's why you get that little twirling circle icon on your cursor. It's just kind of thinking, but as soon as you see it let go, you should have a pretty good edge about your chair. You shouldn't see any extra white pixels. It should all be pretty much right there and ready to go. Pause the video if you feel like you need to kind of play with this and adjust it a little bit. Remember that you can also do Control Z or to go back multiple steps, it's Control Alt Z. I'm going to go ahead and move on with the rest of the video. So we have refined the edge, um, we're looking good on our chair. Now it's time to actually apply that transparent background. So I'm going to come over here to the view and I'm going to click on layers. This is what's going to give me that transparent background because it's pretty obvious we've got a checkered background. The next thing we need to do is save this edit. If we come over here and click OK, we're OK. If we click Cancel, we're going to lose all the work that we just did. But what we need to make sure before we click OK is that we chose um, Output Settings. So yours probably looks like this right now. If you click on the arrow, it's going to kind of drop down some more options. And what you need to pay attention to is the output to make sure that it's set on layer mask. There are a few other options and you can always kind of play with this as you need to. Um, but for our purposes and, and what we're doing for this, we're just going to do output to layer mask and then click OK. It'll bring us back to our original picture and you can kind of see that it had the white background. It took Photoshop a couple seconds, but it, it did eventually put it on the transparent background. So now when I undock this picture and I choose the move command and I click and drag this chair into the picture, um, it is now on a transparent background and it looks like it actually fits in that room, right? I'm going to redock this picture. I'm going to come back to this because I want to show you something. Uh, but for right now, let's go back to the, the room that actually has the chair in it. Cool, right? So if I want to place this in the back, it looks pretty big. But if I have it forward, it looks pretty small. So to adjust the size, all you need to do is hover your mouse over the corner and click on that little grip and you can make it bigger or smaller. But notice that I can also stretch it and squish it unrealistically and want to avoid over stretching and over squishing things. So hold the shift key down while you change the shape and it keeps the furniture in proportion. So that's kind of an easy thing to work with. Um, you can place it in the corner of the room maybe and you can adjust the size as you feel like it should be in proportion to this room. So as soon as you get it to go, hit enter to save your changes and it'll keep your chair the same so that way you can start moving it and kind of start working with other things. I usually come back and click on the black arrow to start working on other things within the picture. Right now, this chair, um, it looks okay. I don't know that it necessarily looks like it fits in the room. It does look kind of bright and it doesn't really match kind of the tone of the room. So make sure that when you do drop furniture in that you do this next important step which is to adjust the lighting and the brightness and the contrast of the furniture. So you do that by making sure that you have the layer selected and actually we should probably rename this layer so that we know that it's the chair. So I'm going to double click where it says layer one and I'm going to name it chair. It's always good to name all of your layers so that you know exactly where something is so that if you need to adjust it, you can easily. So let's change hue saturation now. Double click on where it says hue saturation and I'm just going to say painted wall. All right, so with chair selected in the layers panel, I'm going to come up over here to image in the main menu and click adjustments and you'll see that there's a lot of different things that we can do to kind of um, make adjustments to this. I'm going to focus on brightness and contrast. What happens when you click on that you get this little window and you can make this as bright or as dark as you want to. So I'm going to try and match the lighting of the room a little bit so maybe we're kind of like right there. That looks pretty good. Contrast will either um, brighten the pixels themselves 
or it'll kind of gray them out a little bit. So the less you do, kind of the more realistic it gets. Um, so you can really make it look like it's kind of sitting in that room. Oh, I like it about right there. Make sure that you have preview checked because then you can see as you move these little scroll bars that this will start changing with it. If you don't have it, you're kind of blind guessing as to what you're doing. So make sure preview is checked. When you have it adjusted the way that you feel like it needs to be, let's see here, I'm just trying to, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to click OK. So now your chair is uh, kind of fit for the lighting in the room. It looks like uh, maybe this is kind of coming down. It could be just a little bit too dark. So if I feel like I need to readjust it again, just come back up to image, adjustments, brightness and contrast, and maybe I could make it just a hair brighter. Um, it's really uh, an art and a science again behind this one to see how you want it to look as it's sitting in the room. I also like to play with, um, in adjustments, the vibrance. Um, so you can make it like really super like saturated or you can really kind of gray it out and actually maybe kind of taking the vibrance down a little bit will help it kind of feel like it's also in the room a little bit more realistically. So yeah, there we go. I like it when it's toned down a little bit. Okay, so that is how you get furniture into a blank room. The last thing I want to show you is if you want to take this image and put it into Illustrator, with a transparent background, what you have to do is turn it into a different file format. So right now we have a JPEG, and a JPEG is like a generic picture file. I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Save As. Now normally we would save this as a Photoshop file so that you can come back in here and you can still kind of um, adjust everything, and you'll notice that we have the layer mask right here um, that you can come back and kind of work with this picture still in Photoshop. But to get it into Illustrator, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose Ping. I like to think of Ping as like a smart JPEG. It is the only option that will help the picture remember to keep its transparency. So with Ping selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit Save, and what happens is it does one more little menu box and it says, hey, these are your formatting options for your Ping make sure that it is set to interlacing. Make sure you got that little check next to interlacing. That is the entity that remembers the transparency. If I had that unchecked and made the ping file, it won't remember the transparency and when I go to put it into Illustrator, it's still going to have the white box, even though my Photoshop file shows that it has a transparent box. That is basically how you make a ping file that will remember the transparency. And again, we uh, going to learn how to put a transparent background on furniture and then adjust it for the lighting of the room.